The Growlers is an indie rock band from Southern California and was formed back in 2006. They're known for mixing psychedelic, garage, and surf rock sounds into something that comes off as fresh and classic at the same time. The band's lineup has changed continuously over the years, but vocalist Brooks Nelson and guitarist Matt Taylor were the ones who started the band in the beginning. So far, they've released seven studio albums, gradually evolved their sound, and created their very own festival. Some fans even go so far as to say that they've created their own genre of music, beach goth. But I'll leave it up to you to approve this genre by the end of the video. In this video, we'll take a brief look at their discography, their musical evolution, as well as one of their more celebrated songs, Night Ride. I'm Lee from Lee Likes Music, and this is the history, sounds, and riffs of the Growlers. The band was founded in Dana Point, Orange County in 2006 as an extension of Nilsson's and Taylor's habit of partying. Since the guys found out that they enjoyed making music outside of the party atmosphere as well, they took it more seriously as time went by. Their beginning seems quite humble, with the band members living in commercial buildings and warehouses, being broke and having to tour heavily to make the ends meet. In the start, they recorded their own cassettes and CDs, but then they decided to work with Everloving Records in 2009. The same year, they released their first studio album, Are You In or Out? Hot Tropics is their second record, but it wasn't until their third album, Hung at Heart, that they started to get coverage and attention. They had already created a unique and consistent sound, but what likely gave them a push in terms of notoriety was the involvement of Dan Auerbach, the guitarist and vocalist of the Black Keys. The idea was that he would produce the album, but apparently during the recording sessions things didn't click, and so the band decided to record the album themselves after all. All the stuff that doesn't work, just push it away and just keep going forward. From what I've read about the band so far, it seems like they're one of those bands that have toured heavily for a long time and then gradually gone one step further in their popularity for every album cycle. These guys seem super chill on the surface, but they definitely know how lucky and hardworking you have to be to actually succeed in the music business. Throughout the years, they've had this do-it-yourself approach in almost everything, from their album covers and music production to their touring and even their own festival. The Beach Goth Festival, which they've hosted ever since the early 2010s. At the end of the day, we really are serious and we want to be um, treated that way. People really want to come see the Growlers. Or is that always the case when you go on tour? I don't know, we've been doing this for a while, so uh, it wasn't always like that. Yeah. We kind of had to pay our share and dig the dirt. Here we are. Now, I mentioned earlier that this band has a very unique sound, and one of the things that really stand out about their sound is Brooks Nilsson's earthy and raspy vocals. Apparently, he started smoking at a very early age, and so in some interviews, that's one of the attributing factors, he thinks, to his incredibly scrappy timbre. But it's not just his voice that's interesting here. The band has gone through a very apparent evolution throughout the years. Brooks has talked in interviews about how they always try to surprise the audience with something new. So I decided to listen to their discography from beginning to end before I made this video. And the only thing, to be honest, that I found surprising was how gradually these guys changed. Are You In or Out is quite an experimental record. There's a lot of songs on here, but they're quite short. If you listen closely, you'll hear some of these bent notes but just picture like a, a note in the air and it bending it's kind of like that hot tropics is their second album and it's my personal favorite from their early years and the reason for that is because it's significantly shorter compared to their debut. It ticks in at only 24 minutes, which is great because you just want to listen to the album over and over again. They kept to their surf and psychedelic rock roots on this album. There's definitely an uptick on the production quality. And if there's one song that you should check out from this album, it's Badlands. That's just a banger. With Hung at Heart, I feel like they once again leveled up their production. The vocals are very much in front 
crunch of the entire mix and just all the sounds on this album feel very spacious and very nice to listen to. There are so many more characteristic melodies on here that I'm just really falling in love with. If there's one song you should check out, it's One Million Lovers. By the time of their fourth album, Chinese Fountain, it was apparent to me that they had become way better at working with each other. Their production and songwriting skills were better than ever and they were flirting more often with a pop-oriented sound. This was also the first album where they worked with the producer. Shortly said, by this album, they had matured as a band, but it took them a long time. Fun fact, some people believe the album title was inspired by Brooks's previous occupation as a fountain cleaner. Uh, I used to clean fountains, pick up all your change, and uh, put it into a machine and turn it into cash all over Los Angeles and Orange County. Their album from 2016, City Club, is the one that's notably the most popular among listeners in general. It was their fifth album and was released through Cult Records. This is a prime example of an album where the band steps away from their rough and experimental roots into this fully polished, poppy and mature sound. The title track sounds very psychedelic and some of the guitars on here reminds me a lot of something that the voids could do which maybe isn't such a surprise because Julian Casablancas, the vocalist of The Voids and The Strokes, produced this album. I'll Be Around is a song with a beat-centric, bluesy, black keys vibe, which I'm really digging. And then you have other songs like Dope on a Rope, which has this Johnny Marr, The Smiths, playful guitar part. It's very jangly, it's very playful, it adds a lot of context to the melody. And there's just bangers upon bangers on this album, so I really dig it. Fuck. Lyrically, I'd say many of the songs on this album are quite satisfying too. Brooks sings about a myriad of topics that generally lean in a melancholic direction. He sings about everything from relationships and aging to homelessness and parenthood. I know a handful of music enthusiasts out there that would generalize indie rock lyrics and just call them bland and meaningless. To me, it feels like it doesn't really stand for anything. But to me, it seems like the lyrics and music of the Growlers generally fill people with at least some sense of meaning. At least Brooke seems very sincere about this. There was a point where I've done it a lot where, do I even want to be a band? Like, what the hell am I doing going on these stages? And what's the point? We're not making any money. And, and I think the more people we started touching, we're very approachable so we see our fans and get to hear their stories was enough for me to go, okay, we're making an impact and, and I am having a good time. And you know, not everyone gets to do this. So as you can see, there's a ton of amazing songs on this album, but for a moment I would like to focus on the fourth track, Night Ride. This song gives me heavy Arctic Monkeys vibes, and when I say that I mean the modern Arctic Monkeys. This song sounds like something that could have come off of AM or Tranquility Base Hotel. The lyrics in the song definitely resemble a coloring book. You're kind of invited into giving your own perspective, at least that's what I feel. From my point of view, it seems like the first verse leading into the chorus is about Brooks making the decision to have children. Women have this internal clock, this urge to have children, and the ticking keeps getting louder the older you get from what I've heard from family and female friends. Maybe he had this conversation with his girlfriend but felt unsure about making the decision. My friend Logan Shepard, who helped me out with the cover of Night Ride, had some interesting thoughts on the lyrics as well. What I take away from most of their songs, it's in some way related to growing up, retiring from the party life or the party scene. Nightclubs and backrooms, baggies in the bathroom. You've grown up, but your friends are all the same, doing the same thing every night and over and over and over again until you can no longer and that you are sane. An acknowledgement of the fact that if you don't eventually grow up, there's going to be repercussions for your mental health. Drinking all the night, doing drugs and all that kind of stuff, eventually you're going to lose your mind. By the way, before we move on, I just want to give a thanks to Logan Shepard and Fernando Lemus who helped me record the video and audio for the cover of Night Ride. Logan is a really talented multi-instrumentalist. He's playing drums, bass, guitars, he's even singing. So he's doing a lot of covers over on his YouTube 
channel that are amazing. Fernando is also a YouTuber. He's an amazing videographer and drummer. So go out and check out his channel for drum covers. Links to both of their channels are in the description below. Now, Night Ride is not really a guitar oriented song. Much of the melody is created by a couple of synths and there's also the bass and vocals that also do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to having this melodic framework for the song. But the guitar does come in later during the song, during the chorus. And here it goes through a myriad of triads. If you don't know what a triad is, it's basically the easiest form of a chord. There's three notes played at the same time, or in this case, in an arpeggiated pattern. So like I said, Matt Taylor is playing a myriad of these all across the neck, like this. So let's look at the individual chords here. We have an F major, then we have a G major, then we have a C major, very happy chords, but then we go down to an E minor. And that sounds a little bit melancholic. Then we find the F, G and C chords again, but at a higher point on the neck. And then it goes back to the E minor arpeggio that we played earlier on. Personally, I think this song is really simple to learn on guitar, but it's also very fun. It's great if you want to practice playing chords and triads. In the end, I wanna say that the Growlers are a very hardworking and admirable band on so many different levels. They've gone through a very interesting evolution in terms of their sound, and if you're new to them, I highly recommend you check out the album City Club. So that's it. I'm Lee from Lee Likes Music. Thank you so much for watching.